Let's turn our attention over to the energy market. And Tucker Perkins is with us, President and CEO at Propane Education and Research Council. Thank you for being with us. So uh, first up, you have a new book, Path to Zero, 12 Climate Conversations That Change the World. So congratulations to you on that book. Where does it fit into the big picture in our conversation here today? Hi, Nicole, it's good to be with you. I, mean, I think the book is telling the story that we've been listening to for the last two or three years, really from a variety of different positions, but telling the story of how innovation will get us to where we want to go. Innovation is going to get us to a cleaner climate and we're going to achieve it by 2050. And then really it's also telling the story that we're not going to get there by relying on just one fuel. That it's not just about electrification. It's about a wide path of technologies. And those two stories together really come to, I think, hopefully provide an optimistic view of where we get to in 2050. And when you're looking at energy now, and we think about uh, oil at 80, 82 the barrel, and OPEC and the demand going forward, what are the energy markets looking like? Well, one, I think you're seeing a lot of consolidation, particularly on the U.S. side of that. And you see people beginning to go for scale and go for some expertise. These consolidations are happening in their specific plays, whether it's you know in the Permian or the Haynesville. So you're seeing consolidation. And then secondly, I think the data is just out from last year. You're seeing growth. You're seeing growth across all of the energies. I think global energy demand was up 2%. Uh, fossil fuel demand, coal and oil were also up about 2%. Oddly, natural gas on a worldwide basis was flat. So you're seeing, I think, what we thought you might see, and that is this energy transition that we had been hoping for, and then we saw a bit of a blip around COVID. We're back now to really old school where we have growth in energy and that growth is coming from the traditional fuels like coal and oil. Yeah, I mean, when we think of coal and oil and, and actually when we had an economic downturn, people were right back to coal and oil. They were not interested in talking about um, sort of, you know, renewables and working towards a better environment and things like that. I think when they got nervous, really nervous about the economy, they quickly sort of reverted back. Do you expect more volatility like that? Well, I do expect some volatility, but what I hope happens now is that people begin to focus on using these cleaner fuels. Certainly growth is inevitable. I think we all want growth. We want countries to grow. We want companies to grow. And that implies more demand for energy. But the, the question is, can we choose those cleaner energies? Propane, natural gas, renewable propane, renewable natural gas, and begin to wean ourselves off coal and oil. And that's, I think that's what we're going to see. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we need to do for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, when we think about the transition and the mergers and acquisitions that have been happening, are these big companies prepared? When you look at our big names that we know, our U.S. energy companies? Yeah, I think with certainty they're prepared in terms of having capital, human you know, power, technical abilities to execute at scale. I mean, that's, and that's what we're going to need to execute. We need these big companies to be engaged. There's also, though, an entrepreneurial need and push, and the entrepreneurs are there coming up with creative solutions, uh, different ways to store energy, maybe a different kind of battery. I'm in New York today, and we're talking with a host of people who really are entrepreneurial. But those solutions will ultimately get pushed at scale by the big companies. And in the meantime, when you think about the energy trade and you look at 80, 82, the barrel, where do you think that's headed? Well, the people that I follow and listen to and really believe, I would say they all think we're range bound. You know, you and I talk about it and it's very unexciting, you know, the end of June going into July. It's about that supply demand precipice where to a degree supply can be controlled. It's been about geopolitical issues that are somewhat uh, normalized right now. You're just talking about the strength of the dollar and inflation. That's kind of the latest thing we're all watching. But at the end of the day, I think oil, gasoline, natural gas, propane, fairly range bound. The, the people that I follow, no one's talking about crude 
even into the foreseeable future, above $88. The boldest prediction I've seen is at 90, and I tend to hold 86 to $88 crude is, I think, what we'll see in the foreseeable future. And drilling here at home, um, how do we see that in, you know, in comparison to the past or what could happen in the future? You know, natural gas has come up. I think, you know, natural gas was as high as $5. It fell down uh, in the low dollar fifty. Today it's 266 and it's fallen a bit. But what we do see is com companies are paying attention to their capital. So they've drilled, but they're doing what we, they have what we call ducks drilled and uncompleted wells. They're ready to come back on when the price moves up, but at these prices, a dollar sixty, a dollar seventy-five, kind of sub two dollars a decatherm, you're gonna see most of these companies sit on the sideline and the drill counts are reflecting that. The drill counts are certainly off. Yeah. Tucker Perkins, great to see you, Propane Education and Research Council. Thank you, Tucker.